Welcome to Chronic Combat Conversations, a live look at our best bets, picks, and predictions for every UFC event with your host, TV Scouting MMA, and the guru back again for UFC Vegas 55, Holly Holm taking on Ketlin Vieira, also known as UFC Fight Night 206 or UFC on ESPN Plus 64. But before we can get into this, interesting card <laughs> to say the least we have a, a new friend in the house big on twitter up well over 50 units <laughs> drop the mic 50 units <laughs> on the year right you should be better if you're following us on better mma you better be following him on better mma tips as well prodigy mma man what is going on welcome Hey, it's good to be here, guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, had a rough week last week. I'm ready to bounce back. Uh, let's start it up right here on the show. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we we kind of we didn't have a necessarily a fantastic week last week either. Um, I thought no better guy to bounce back with than you, because uh, I mean, I've been watching you a little bit from afar, especially on Twitter. You're a great follow, and uh, always putting out bets throughout the week. And uh, yeah, I was like, you know what? Maybe this is the way we get back into the green. I think one of the super interesting things I see on the feed that that keeps me interested is like, and we saw the post today, I think it was uh, the topology yeah. kind of implied probability <laughs> fees. We love that. So, so like it kind of gives you an idea what the public or even the, the betting public it is because the people that are on topology, you got to imagine a lot of these people are dabbling in the betting markets too, being if you're that diehard a fan to be picking your fights on topology. So uh, to, to give a breakdown and see what, the people are doing on a statistical basis. It gives you a really good idea of how that reflects on the betting line and where there might be some bias and stuff. So proud of you. Shout out, man. Uh, we, we love what you're doing out there and keep it going. dude. Uh, so, Hey, thank you. Yeah. Any, uh, anything to add about that, man? Cause you kind of like started that wave no? Yeah. I mean, I get a mixed bag of responses there uh, every week. You know, some guys think that's the actual odds. And they, kinda, <laughs> they DM they me some bets they want to make, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's a good way to gauge the public. You know, uh, you see what everybody's looking into. I don't know about this topology crowd, how many people are like diving into fights, taping everything, and how many are just casuals. But I mean, you got to know the sport to make an account on there at least. So it, it's an interesting poll. Yeah. You're getting your bigger, your biggest market of fans for sure. So even if they're the, the casual ones flooding the market with, their $20 bets from grandma's armchair. Like that's just kind of <laughs> what it is. So it is interesting to see that. I also would be interested what the implied odds, obviously kind of verdict does it for you. That's kind of the name of the app with the, with the, the betting of the free XP, but the implied odds of that is, is certainly interesting as well. Yeah. absolutely. Well, uh, so as we talked about, uh, we just dropped those today and here we are to break down UFC Vegas 55, Holly home versus Caitlin Vieira. We are here uh, to see that. <laughs> so, I mean, we might as well get right down into it because this main event um, is interesting to say the least. It is. Uh, Holly Holm is how old now, and when was the last time she fought? So, <laughs> Can we Holly, pull up them stats, boy? Yeah. So here we go. Yeah, Guru, shout out because I was about to start plowing right into it without. The oh, details. you you love to plow. We know that. Oh yeah, let's go. It's a party. Uh, <laughs> so Homer Simpson, Mr. Plow. That's it, man. Uh, we plow, that's we my got name. my name again is Mr. Plow. <laughs> Oh, man, Guru off to a hot start. Here we go. Spicy. <laughs> uh, so we got Holly Holm versus Caitlin Vieira. This one, Holly Holm, as Guru asked, 40 years old. And uh, what is this, a 19-month layoff? So that, is that, it, Again, is that maybe one of the longest of her career? I probably should have asked these questions to myself before we went live. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question, Guru. But, uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, so, yeah, I mean, Holly, I think one of the things that you'll see is that she still does have a bit of an experience edge on Vieira, which you'd hope with the 10-year age difference. But it's not to the point where she has all these miles on her. Uh, and I think, you know, kind of dealing with these injuries and fighting back, she was in a full fight camp and was scheduled to – to go what was it against uh norman dumont right and then had to pull out last second so yeah i, I mean for for this fight specifically i mean right now it's minus 250 holly Holm plus 200 caitlin Vieira. i just saw looking i mean to do like the simple mma math aside from like breaking down the styles watching holly Holm kind of walk uh irene aldana around the ring do whatever she wanted in that respect from range mix in the wrestling 
uh, you know, I think that'll be a little bit more difficult in this matchup because Vieira's got that black belt and definitely a much better wrestling background. But overall, I just think that Holm has the the, the ringmanship and, and the experience to kind of make Vieira follow her around. Now, I do think Vieira does have good offensive capabilities, but like when she throws those combos, she is open on, on the return. I, I mean, minus 250 now, the line's starting to get moving here. Guru, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, part of me feels like if I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat for a second, I kind of feel like the UFC really wanted Misha Tate to win this fight, the fight versus Caitlin Vieira, because then they could have booked Tate versus Holm, which is a much more marketable fight, at least in terms of name value. Um, but other than the tinfoil hat stuff, I, I mean, I think you, you said everything right. Um, Holly Holm has only been beaten by the best of the best. Um, Caitlin Vieira m- may very well, you know, climb herself to that point. I mean, she's cli- she's trying to climb herself there now at, at you know at thirty years old. Um, we've seen the best of Holly Holm, right? So that that's fair to say, right? There's there's no um going to be major change in her game plan. We're really just hoping the Holly Holm that we saw against Arena Aldana and Raquel Pennington is still here. I mean, she's obviously she's 40 and you're expecting some level of decline, but I mean, she's such a physical specimen at, you know, athlete that it's very possible that, you know, like Dio Romero, like, you know, the drop off is very slim to none um, in terms of physicality. So that's kind of what we're banking on here. I, we got her at round, I believe minus 200 and uh, the line has only moved up since then. Right. Where, where is that line currently now? I believe minus 250. My, minus 250 now, yeah. So we played on our bet MMA. We got a minus 200 a little earlier in the week when we played four to win two. Yeah. So, and uh, that, I, that's the benefit of following over there. And uh, Prodigy, I'm, I mean. Yeah, I, I was also going to say quickly before oh, we yeah. hand it to my guy who de- we definitely need to hear from. I, I don't, I'm not sure what Caitlin Vieira is going to bring that Holly Holm hasn't seen. And right. since I hate giving out lines that have uh, expired, um, I think Holly Holm and over one and a half on DraftKings is that same minus 200 that we got the money line at. And I, I don't see an early finish. Holly Holmes' last finish was against Betch Cohea in 2017. Right. My guy, Prodigy, long overdue. Let's hear from you. Yeah, I definitely don't think we see a finish on the home side for sure. Um, I mean, I love me some Preacher's Daughter, but at 40 years old, it's getting a little tough to back her here. Uh, it's not too often you see a fighter almost a two-year layoff with some knee injuries and they come back looking improved. But if there was no none of these red flags, I mean, I'd be all over her here. But, I mean, it, it's going to be tough to, to get to the window at this price right now. If Like, what happens if Vieira gets on top of her, just finds her way on top? I, I don't know if, um, if Holly's winning that round. Um, but I, I just, yeah, <laughs> but I, I can't back Ketlin here unless that price gets crazy. I, I would need a 250, 300 on, on the plus side over there to back her. I mean, she's been outstruck in seven out of eight of her UFC fights. Only person she didn't out, outstrike was Ashley Evan Smith. <laughs> which I, if, if you can't outstrike her, it's time for Bellator. Or steroids. Um, <laughs> I was yeah. accidental. Sorry, Ashley. <laughs> the options are endless. <laughs> <laughs> um, the plus money on, on the home decision, if if I could find that, that, that could be interesting. But right now, I'm laying off this too wide of a line for me. Yeah, to your point, home by decision right now, minus 110 okay. on DraftKings. I don't, I don't blame you for staying away at all. I just think that uh, kind of like you said, I don't think there is anybody that can't outstrike Vera on the feet. Um, I, I guess the question is kind of what we came down to in, in scouting on tape from one, the footwork that Holly Holm is able to use and kind of keep away uh, from takedown attempts in general. She has given up six in her career, but that's on, on 26 total attempts. And she's only given up 5% opponent control. Vieira has given up almost triple that in her career. So I'm actually kind of curious if she were to try to initiate the grappling on home, if not, Holly, you know, would be able to turn her out and, and get her own control, at least in the clinch. I, I don't think that this fight sees the ground too much just because of the footwork. Yeah, I, I'm, I agree completely. 
Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Holly's only been taken down, I think, once in the last six years. Yeah. I mean, hasn't Dude. faced the most uh, daunting wrestlers, but it's not a bad stat. Yeah, Is there I any value like in just betting the fight to go the distance at all? At like, I don't know, near minus 200? Because we don't really see much finishing ability in either of them at this yeah, it is. It's not horrible, but I I don't want to see another one of those uh, blown out knees. Oh God, uh, uh, that was a painful, painful week. way to end it out last week. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I, especially because uh, DraftKings gave me a a boost to play either like uh, it was a a hundred percent boost on anything I wanted, and I was deciding at minus two hundred to play Rackick or minus two hundred to play Holly Holm. And which I guess, whatever, either way, I might end up in a bad position, but I might get the same result. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. It boosted to plus 100. So, um, whatever. That my man was winning that fight, non contact (laughs) injury. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I would have liked to see that play out. No, No, not at all. For sure. Well, hey, I mean, talk about, uh, you know, exciting exciting fights we got our co-main event which honestly i mean this could be the people's main event here we got it is. santiago ponzinibbio versus michelle Pereira. i mean we're gonna see some fireworks here uh you got the south Probably american some flair uh Pereira was like a little upset he had to fight the argentinian ponzinibbio he said he's like that's close enough to brazilian so he wasn't like looking forward to the matchup so much in that regard but like he was like yeah it's okay it's my job like i'm gonna do what i have to do like Michelle didn't, he just, for... wait, didn't he just fight Andre Fajalio? Is he not Brazilian? Am I? No, he's um Portuguese. Oh yes, he is. So, completely different continent. Look at that. Of course. Yeah. Look but at they that. speak the same language. Yeah, but I would never. Have yes. Portuguese. But uh, yeah. so, anyways, uh, yeah. So Michelle Pereira, I think one of the things that we've seen in his time in the in the octagon is that he's gone from being one of these explosive, entertaining, you know, looking to do stuff just for the fans to like. Showing a little bit more process, a little bit more timing, uh, floating around the outside. And, you know, when he does go for these explosive maneuvers, you know, it, it's not as uh, as energy expending as it had been in the past. So I, I do think that Pereira, you know, I'm a little bit more comfortable with his ability to go to decision at this point. It's just tough knowing that Ponzinibbio is going to be bringing that pressure on the front foot the whole time. And Ponzinibbio loves throwing those leg kicks, which... In Pereira's last fight against probably the best boxer he's faced, he had a little bit of trouble in that first round before Fialio started succumbing a bit to, to the body kicks and everything. So Ponzinibbio, I think, is a little bit more prepared, one, to, to face those attacks, and two, to be no, more diverse in his own attacks to slow down Pereira. So I do think that there is a reason why this line is close, but I just think overall Pereira does bring just a little bit more of an explosive game plan at this point. And I, I trust his capabilities to stay on the outside and frustrate Ponzinibbio a bit with his movement. Uh, and if the wrestling does come into play, it's going to be Pereira, and he should have the size and strength advantage here as well. I'm not running to play it now that we've lost the even money. Yeah. And now you've got, uh, what is it, minus 120 now on Pereira. So it's, it's a little bit sketchier in that regard, but it, if you want to take, like, we love the fight parlays on DraftKings, so it's like a Pereira and over one and a half. You know, if you if you want to follow this trend of him going with the overs, that's a plus one hundred five to get a little plus money on him. But uh, it could very well just be an inside the distance. So that's one of those things where, like, at the end of the day, I might just end up on that one twenty, just like very small and, and not like super confident. Yeah, I similarly I like everything that you said, uh, Michelle Pejia, uh significantly younger seven years younger has taken a lot less damage um has a lot less ufc fights as well um but he has you know been fairly active right you know uh i guess maybe one month more active but i just i just more recently obviously with with ponzinibbio having the injuries in the layoff um has been one and two since returning since then obviously has faced solid competition you know the liang fight we kind of give him a break because that was his comeback has a great fight against baeza but maybe what what is that really worth now if you're kind of getting into a war with baeza who i I don't know maybe he's maybe he might not even be ufc level and um that split decision loss to jeff neal i mean i felt like jeff kind of won one in three fairly comfortably um yeah i I, michelle pahea seems to play with his food a little too much 
Um, so it I, when when like you said, we could have had him at at even money to to lay minus one twenty, minus one twenty five. Seems um, I don't know, not not what I want to do. Uh, I kind of like the over one and a half, like you said, because my the play I kind of like. I do like this fight to go the distance. Maybe that's crazy of me. Um, but I mean, as you've seen, you've seen the last three fights for Pejia go the distance and you've seen, uh, three of the last five for Magni, I mean, for Ponzinibbio go the distance. Um, so minus minus one fifty, at 60% probability. I, uh, I kind of like that. What do you think prodigy? Yeah. I mean, Ponzi hasn't looked the same since come back from that layoff. He's noticeably a little slower. Um, but he had, I think he had MRSA, a broken hand. He got COVID a couple times. Um, he, he's got a solid chin outside of that Lee fight. Uh, it's just his striking defense lets him down sometimes. Definitely. It, if he can go back to the old Ponzi and pressure Bahia into the fence and, uh, force a little firefight out of him he, he he can have some success here but I, I i'm gonna need some more plus money on ponzi here if i'm gonna get to the window um i'm definitely not looking at Bahia as a favorite uh if i can get a plus 120 125 on ponzi i'll, I'll probably play that i'm look at him uh I'll look at his decision prop a little bit too. I do think this fight gets extended, like you said. Um, yeah, I think there could be some value on the dog here, but it's not too much meat on the bone. Yeah, these these bookies, man, they line these fights pretty close to accurate, and if they're not accurate, the the sharp betters like within I don't know a day or two of these lines getting released, they they bet it to where it's kind of supposed to be. And um, and you see a fight like this with uh, fairly well known fighters that they're, they're kind of they're gonna nail it in terms of the line, and uh, yeah, un- unless the unexpected happens, right? Unless the non contact ACL injury, like I, I do, I think they're gonna, this is gonna be an interesting. Fight. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, that shit makes me sick. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I do think that it is notable that we have seen Ponzinibbio one knocked out pretty much cold since he's come back, and two. We've seen him get a little frustrated with the the pace and athleticism of a younger fighter. So I could totally see Pereira. Like that's where it's right, how but like here's the but, trust, right, but here's how much the do you trust Pereira? That, right, that's no, but, all right, exactly. but here's the thing: Pereira, since coming to the UFC, even though he has this like aura around him as as this finisher, as this knockout guy, he has the flying knee debut versus my man, who's not my man, who I roast all the time, Danny Hot Chocolate Roberts. He gets the the finish kind of right versus D, uh, Diego Sanchez, but not really because then it's a DQ, and he chokes out Imadayev, like who's not in the UFC, I don't think. So that's it. Like he's hasn't finished anybody. He's not this big power puncher. He will gas out doing backflips more than he's going to gas out throwing power punches. It's just whether San Diego crumbles under one, which I don't know that he will. Lee has heavy hands. Right. Well, I was just saying it's it's uh, it's definitely notable to see the difference. So I, I think Jeff Neal wasn't able to knock him out. I don't think Pereira will right. be able to knock him out. But I will say that the leg kicks, the body kicks, all those things are going to slow down a guy like Ponza Nibio, now 35 years old, facing a larger mm-hmm. opponent who's got an athleticism advantage. Yeah. I do think that it could be tough at the end. Neal didn't look the same coming back either. But Prodigy, did you want to add something? No. Oh, okay, cool. I just I was making sure. <laughs> All right, fair enough. But yeah. yeah, but I don't. I didn't know. I wasn't sure that Neil looked yeah. as great either because he was coming back from his whole craziness. I did yeah. have my guy Neil in that fight. Which... That was a good uh, choice. Yeah, yeah but I think we were on the other side, and we sadly were. so. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, because <laughs> it was the narrative from the uh, DUI thing that he had going on too. Always bet on guys that got a DUI the week before. <laughs> yeah. Have a lot to prove. And they need one and oh, and from what I've seen, you're one and oh, so that's a that's a good sample size. You're though. getting some line value no matter what, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so hey guys, thanks for stopping in to join the show. Uh, we got our boy Prodigy in here, TV and Guru, as always. Hope you give us a like on the video here, 
Also, please subscribe if you haven't already because we bring you the free bets every week, uh, all, of our, all of our best bets, picks, and predictions. And uh, we hope you guys keep on coming back because no matter what, we're going to keep it going over here. You know, we can have a tough week. Sometimes it's down, but uh, we, we just like to keep it coming because we love the Still game. Still up money overall. Money. All time. That's it. That's it. So, hey, we're going to have our ups and downs. It happens, but – that's why we bring in the best there is, you know, from all around to, to help us out. And we're still learning the game. And that's why we hope you guys are here, too, because we're always down to learn and, and get better. That's uh, true. So to, to get down to that point, we got a couple guys here uh, on the younger side. Uh, we got Chidi and Jokowani versus Dusko Todorovic. This one going to be a pretty banging matchup from the looks of it. I mean, uh, jokowani has got a pretty decent size advantage here. Two inches of height, six inches of reach. Like once it gets to that much, it starts to get pretty notable. Uh, when you have like a one or two inch advantage, um, not not as good for you. But in Jokowani, I mean, as you saw with the Mark Andre Barrio, it, uh, he's very explosive and can make things happen. But as you also saw in his LFA uh, performance before getting on, uh, yeah, I, I mean, ultimately in Jokowani, he's able to like reverse stuff and 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 keep it from being stuck on his back on the ground, something that's happened in the past to have him lose decisions. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that now he's made some adjustments and he does have that black belt and in Jokowani, you know, I, I do think we'll be safe for the most part against Todorovic here, but the longer this fight goes on, you know, Todorovic, he does like working into the clinch and, you know, working in those takedowns once he starts getting his, his physical advantages going, but, uh, I, I just think, you know, Njokuwani at minus 225 now and Todorovic at plus 185. Well, I do think Njokuwani probably gets the win more often than not. I, I don't think I feel comfortable laying the line at this point. And yeah, I, I don't blame you at all. This fight is super duper sketchy. Um, this should be like, I don't know, somewhere on a contender series. This this is This is crazy that this is on your main card. Um, but this whole main card is kind of wild. This whole card is wild in terms of that. But hey, their fights, and I'm certainly interested to see them. Chitty coming off that in 16 second flattening at a pick 'em odds versus uh, Mark Andre Barrio, who then came out after that and had an impressive performance. Contender series, man, was was not a super impressive fight per se. Um, you know, it was fine. I don't really see anything too crazy there. Right, loses on Bellator to, to Carvalho. And then, uh, you know, you look at the other side of that coin with Dusko, and, uh, you know, it's been a mixed bag for him as well, right? Beating Taquan Townsend, who <laughs> was, like, kind of notoriously bad in the UFC. Um, loses to Polahane Soriano, who, you know, honestly is... I don't know, right? Again, like you're not really sure what you're getting with Polyhano because she he gets the split decision loss to Nick Maximov, who loses last week as the big favorite. So, and then you have Mackie Patolo, who he beats and who's no longer in the UFC. Um, didn't really have what it takes, honestly. And um, yeah, you're really not sure with Dusko. What what I do know about Dusko though is he keeps his hands down low and he loves to to bang. And what I know about Chidi is he can fucking strike. He's long. He's lean. Um, yeah, I I kind of like him to to win the fight, kind of get the finish, but not anything I want to put my money on in terms of that. Prodigy, do you have uh, any stronger feelings than us about this? Q Money Sniper in the house. Let's go, Prodigy. Let's go. We love seeing those. Shout out my out. guy, Money Sniper. Great dude. Hey. Great dude. Hell yeah. Appreciate um, you popping in, bud. When uh, when I saw Chitty knock out Mark Andre Barrio, that killed me, man. I, I was pretty big <laughs> on MAV there. Yeah, same. The granite chin got it's collapsed, but um, yeah, I think this is a great spot here on the dog. You don't get opportunities like this often off one of those flash KOs. I mean, obviously, Dusko's there to be hit again. Uh, same same thing can happen. He can get first round knocked out, but I'm willing to back his wrestling background. If he comes, puts a singlet on here at, at a plus 200 dog, I mean, we could be looking at some serious value. I'm going to let keep letting this line fly up. 
It's been going up all week. I'm hoping for uh, 225, 230, and, and then I'll uh, probably drop a, a nice, nice size play on that. Uh, looking at Dusko decision plus 480, I believe it was as well. Um, yeah, I really think he could take Chitty down, and uh, if he get, gets on top of him, Chitty's got a good baseline takedown defense. But once you crack that and you put him on his back, he yeah he can stay there. Yeah. Um, okay. This this I think this is priced way too wide here. It should be more. Uh, mm. Chitty should be about a minus one twenty. Mm. Yeah. Th- see, that's kind of the vibe I was getting here, is because like in Jokowani, wow. while he should win, like most of the stand-up exchanges, I really do think that Dusko has a big advantage on the ground here. And it's like Chitty, he's not like the most agile as far as keeping the distance overall. Um, I, I think it's he he more relies on his offense to scare guys off. The thing that keeps scaring me about Dusko is that he relies on the head movement and keeps his hands so low. But uh yeah, I mean, he has shown to to use it in his favor before, and man, that Dusko line, like you said, if it gets up oh. that high, gonna have to take a little dabble. I'm with you, Prodigy. What about Cheaty yeah. being two inches taller and having a six inch reach advantage? It's kind of like, I mean, it could keep him at distance, right? It's substantial. It will certainly I, help. Yeah, and I mean, and if he starts hurting him with power, I'm not sure if Dusko will be able to, you know, close that distance. But yeah, I mean, you, yeah. It, it's certainly scary when when we don't really know about how good Chidi is in terms of his takedown defense or you know getting up off his back. Right. I think just I, as far as like studying the lines and stuff, that the fact that you could like Todorovic was like minus four hundred, minus six hundred in his last few fights before he kind of fell down. I think you're getting a huge t- like big time discount on what people once thought he was, and I think a lot of that talent is still in there. Prodigy, what, what were you saying? Though? Yeah, these sell high spots off a, a 16 sell, second knockout are some of the best uh, spots you can find in betting. Um, I mean, this this line's way overblown. The the way to beat Chitty, you got to get in his face, cage push him, take him down, just pressure him constantly, and, and he usually breaks. I, I know he's been a different dude since he left Bellator, but okay. I, I'm willing to to take the dog here for sure to test him. Yeah. Wow. Shout out Gowers. Just uh, give a little subscribe to the channel. Much appreciated. If you guys are watching right now and you haven't subscribed to the channel or following prodigy out there on Twitter at prodigy underscore MMA underscore. You see all of our names here. It's TV scout and MMA guru scout and MMA. We're bringing you all the picks and we're hopping on to our next fight, which honestly, I mean, th- this one, the beauty uh, contest. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm pretty excited for this one. Uh, we <laughs> got my guy Gowers too. Good, great dude, great dude Gowers. That's awesome. Yeah, Thanks for popping in, man. Gotta gotta love the people. That's what we love about the community is like just getting getting all the people together. We we love talking fights. We love getting all the different perspectives and like trying to learn a little bit from each other because it's definitely us against the bookies, guys. That's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Curry Ninja MMA happened in. What's going on, brother? What's up, Curry? As far as safer props and fight odds wise, the over one and a half or two and a half should hit for all the women's MMA cards on this fight, unless Viana Rishi ends in sub or something. Well, that is kind of <laughs> where I'm sitting on this fight. Is like this, 100%. this is kind of the definitely the most uh volatile of the women's MMA fights on this card. Is that I could kind of see a finish coming in almost any which way on either side here. For one, I mean, Pollyanna Viana has shown to pack a little bit of a punch in, in her history, knocking out Hibosh on the regional scene. Uh, you know, she she also is able to get three submission wins um, and uh, in the UFC so far. But, you know, she, she's now shoot to box, Diego Lima. Uh, you see she's yes, with she Oliveira and Alan Nascimento. So that's... When Guru started and showing Willie me Cat. that, I was like, oh, geez, I, I, I got to update the, the gym now for next time because that's a pretty big development. For someone that's so talented from a grappling perspective, uh, you'd like to see that like forward pressure, elbows, violence, because like when, when Viana gets taken down, that's what she's doing off of her back. It's just you, you like to see her do it a little bit more on the feet as far as aggression goes because she doesn't mind getting taken down. And when she does get there, yeah, 
some of the people that she's tapped out have been like a little bit lower level. Uh, definitely in that regard, you know what I mean? So, uh, and, you know, losing by armbar to, to Macedo, you know, definitely Oof. something to keep an eye on. But at the same time, it's like Tabitha Ritchie, you know, overall in her career, you know, who has she beaten that's that great? You got to give her props for stepping up to take on Fioro, but doesn't really do so well there. Uh, Oliveira. Turn the door. Yeah, exactly. And then Oliveira, it's like you would think that she would be able to find a finish given her 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 control and ability to really work in that fight and, and the experience bro oh, she ru- she rushes in head first looking at her feet for takedowns i've never seen yeah. anything like it i mean the, i think i would think the best part of doing something like that is that you go to like i don't know you go wrestle with daniel cormier for six weeks <laughs> and, and you can fix something like that but I, I don't know that she has per se. You know, she's very yeah. she's very young at 27. So you I would expect and look for her to be making, you know, rapid improvements to her game. But on the same side of that coin, you have Pollyanna Viana, who's 29 at Shudo Box, you know, currently the best, you know, with one of the best gyms in the country, in the world, not the not our country, <laughs> obviously, their country. Um and and uh you know I, I expect to see those improvements and um one thing you see about tabitha Ricci's game is that her her striking is extremely you know rudimentary it's, it's very basic and she's not doing too much damage with that and then when you see her at least with what i saw with the the Oliveira fight you know she's on top and she wants position uh position over submission she's just trying to control and as soon as she tries she's in full mount and she tries to rein in some damage and the girl scoots out f- through her through her back <laughs> like uh, from full mount and it's like okay are you gonna be able to hold down and control poly on viana when we you know right when tabitha ricci's game plan is to wrestle i would think and uh you know polyana viana is dangerous off her back you know, if this stays at the feet for 15 minutes, I, I don't know. It's I'd probably like the line say it's basically a coin flip because I, I still, I guess, I would take the girl that's a little bit longer with Viana. Um, too many sniper the G. Too many sniper. Way Hell back. yeah, man! Just subscribe. We appreciate that, man. Um, Let's go, Prodigy. I think you had something uh, interesting on this fight. So what do you got, bud? Yeah, I got my girl, Baby Shark. Uh, oh, let's go! Do 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 do. <laughs> dropped uh two and a half units at minus 125 um yeah i think it's gonna be a boring fight she's just gonna lay and pray uh viana has no problem letting her take her down to the ground and it, it's gonna come down to can she get an arm bar honestly and yeah um, <laughs> At minus 125, I'm willing to bet that she is she <laughs> not going to get that arm bar. Wow. Um, I, I don't see Richie getting a sub on her. I, I don't see Mas- uh, Macedo 2.0 coming out here. But <laughs> it could happen. I mean, I, I think Vienna probably wins the minutes on the feed here. Um, it's It will be ugly either way on the feet. Yeah. But. Yeah, I think this I is going to be a classic wait, but let's be honest, though. Not that ugly, right? Not that ugly, right? It won't look that There's, ugly. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's nothing ugly about this fight. No, nothing <laughs> at all. Nothing at all. Oh, God, the cheeky comments. Um, Yeah, I, I think, I mean, in terms of that, when you look at DraftKings, I kind of like the finish only idea for the Pollyanna Viana side at minus 120 because I don't see Pollyanna winning this fight if it goes the distance at all. Yeah, I think that's a good line yeah so um it's, to me it's very similar to the the fight from what well, maybe was it last week the tracy cortez melissa gatto fight yeah where we, were ha- we were happy to like let our units why right? we played melissa gatto finish only that was yes. the way that she was gonna win and she couldn't do it shout out to tracy cortez and uh whatever you know nothing venture i mean whatever no problem because we we ventured the money and we get it right back because it's a push so for so interestingly enough, that's where it's like in this case you kind of like straddle the fence because you could do that minus uh, 120 Viana finish only and minus 150 Richie decision only too. I mean that's 
Yeah, that's not like like either side. Like, yeah, you're giving up a little bit of price, but I really think like that's how their that's opponent's going to win. So it's like you, you might as well have a little action. Like, because at it's least juicy. if one thing happens, listen, and the I'm other not, bet gets canceled out. And and listen, I, I really I, I don't want to talk too much about you know prize bet about prizes bet because it's probably it's a good bet. He's probably gonna win. I get so nervous when I look at who she's fought. LFA versus a girl two and three. One in, beats a girl who's one and five on LFA. O and O. O one and two. O and O. That's it. She hasn't really done much yet. So oh, yeah, and she was <laughs> minus twenty five hundred against like both of those girls. Yeah. So I mean she's certainly a prospect and she's a physical specimen and like she's yoked. Oh, yeah. Um <laughs> but yeah, I mean Pollyanna has like been around the block a little at this point. Right now, her two, three, four, five. This is her eighth UFC fight. So, you know, she's been like, around the block, losing split decisions. To <laughs> Listen, she uh, to me, I rewatched that fight. I thought she beat Hannah Cyphers. So that's that's uh, tough. I don't agree. <laughs> the meeting, the, the meeting members certainly thought so on a, you know MMA decisions. Um, it was, it's interesting because again, Hannah Cyphers had the four, basically four minutes of top control in that second round, but she's not doing anything with it. And it's, it's Hannah, Con I mean, it's Hannah, it's Pollyanna constantly threatening with different submissions that Hannah has to like, dr you know, figure out how to not drown in. Um, so yeah, definitely you got to sub JJ Aldrich too, if she's in your guard. Uh, I don't yeah. Know. That was important <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah i mean uh, uh i guess you know and when you say it like that i mean it, it gives you it gives you a a fair feeling as to maybe why she won't be able to pull it off against baby i Shark. do think richie is game so yeah. I, I do think if there's anyone to pull it out like so like hey maybe i'll be doing that little we little would never pull out these day. girls come on yeah. all right all right <laughs> oh, i think goodness. that's i think that's my cue to to push Easy things along here we got uh, a. <laughs> Uh, Eric Anders versus John Young Part, uh, the the Iron Turtle. Um, That's that chin name. that chin got tested though last time out. Does he have to change the nickname at this point? I think, Bron I think it's Bronze now, the Bronze Turtle. Yeah, at least you know something like that. I mean, like the dude, he's still. Uh, I mean, that what a fight uh, with with Hobo Cup. You know what? If he uh, wins this fight, he can be he can be redeemed back. Yeah. I do turtle. think I do think he wins this fight. Park now minus two hundred five. Anders plus one hundred and sixty. Park, I mean, I'm just impressed overall. Like you look at his pace from distance. I mean, he almost doubles up Anders overall. Uh, uh, you look at all the striking stats. He, he's got an advantage over Anders. I, Anders has always looked a little bit tentative and like you know not willing to mix it up at a high pace. Uh, he seemed to like come into his own a little bit in that in that first Darren Stewart matchup, but then uh, I think between like gassing out and throwing that illegal knee, he's <laughs> he got a little scared off in their next matchup. Uh, but Eric Anders, I mean, you know, he's strong. He's got like decent wrestling. Uh, he's able to get some reversals and, and, and do stuff like that. But overall, I mean, Park is just uh, he was willing to play around with. Rodriguez and go down there and yeah he gave up the body triangle and all that but he was just about turned around into it a couple times survives a, a back take from Rodriguez and, and doesn't get subbed in that first round I thought that was legit so Park definitely impressed me as far as his grappling credentials I think he's got Andrews pretty much covered every every angle here mm -hmm. uh Park minus 205 uh, I'll, I'll be part laying that somewhere yeah I I think I I I know I actually agree and and the tape certainly agrees with you as well um, Eric Anders has has been somebody that's been fairly disappointing throughout his throughout his UFC run, right? The the big famed Alabama football player that you know has all this athleticism, has all this talent, and and you know just doesn't necessarily get it done at at times, right? Losing to Christoph Jocko, losing the, the one of the worst fights ever to Khalil Roundtree, split decision losses to uh, Elias Theodora, the the ring boy. <laughs> the, the the split decision loss to Leota Machida in his in a, the most random main event you could ever possibly think up um get subbed by Andre Muniz in his last outing you know not really the biggest knock Andre Muniz seems to be the dark horse in that division he's a, he seems to be a super stud 
Um, but even the Darren Stewart fight that I was uh, in attendance for, which was the second one, uh, just a very, it was probably the most boring fight on an otherwise awesome card. Um, <laughs> that then that fight also had the Penny Kianzad fight on. Anyway, <laughs> not not a great <laughs> fight, not a great showing by either guy. Darren Stewart no longer in the UFC. And, you know, again, like you look at who he's beat. He's got the knockout over Vincus Morea to basically keep him in the UFC. He's got a split decision win over Mearshart and hasn't really done anything impressive. You know, it's it's been a tough run. And you look at the stats here and jung Park Park's got him beat in this in the striking where you where you really want Eric Anders to be. And jung Park Park has no problem mixing it up in the takedown department with 2.6 takedowns per 15 minutes. And, uh, you know, you look at his takedown defense at 71% or 73%. It's not, you know, that's, oh, that seems like a decent number. It's, it is on paper, but, you know, it's not, he hasn't faced people like that. have been really trying to take him down too much. And this guy's going to take him down or at least clinch him up where he doesn't want to be. So I do like park here to get it done. Uh, prodigy. What do you think, bud? Yeah, this is one of the fights I have yet to tape. Um, I mean, I would have loved to jump on that park pick em line that it opened at. That uh, was a little crazy. But yeah, this that's looks... One, that's one of those lines that I'm talking about that like these lines open and then like you go to sleep. They oh, they open as you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning, 7 a.m. And they're, that, that doesn't exist anymore. Ah, oh, it was crazy. up on bet online for like three minutes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Three minutes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but this looks pretty accurate at this maybe park minus two twenty five. Yeah. I don't know if I'll end up getting there, but I mean, I, I love me some Iron Turtle. His last fight, he was, was he easily could have won that if he just. Didn't want to stand and bang with Gregory Rodriguez. The Robocop. That was fucking nuts. He just gassed out out of nowhere, too. He just was like, whoa, I'm tired and hurt. That was crazy. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, a great fight. I think that was sick. That second round, right, is like up there for round of the year. Like, that was sick. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, he should have Anders covered here. Andrews, I mean, he looked sloppy in that rematch with Darren Stewart, and I had, <coughs> I had a lot of money on uh, Andrews in that rematch. Thank God he pulled it out. But. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's super sketchy. Not somebody I would, I want money on. Speaking of sketchy, how about this next one? What is what is the deal, yo? <laughs> well, what I, I is the deal, yeah? <laughs> Uh, I mean, ultimately, uh, last thing on that one, uh, yeah, Jung Young Park knockout plus 350. I Ooh. think you saw, um, he, he could put on like a little bit of a volume pace, and Anders doesn't necessarily like getting hit so much. I think, uh, it could be like one of those volume based dealios, but I, I wouldn't throw too much on that, just like one of those last little ideas. Yeah, so, that price. what was the price? Yeah, right? Plus 350. I, I thought that there's some value there because. I mean, just like from a tape perspective, watching what he was able to do damage wise against Gregory Rodriguez, or even just in general, his jab, leg kick, you know, he he puts it together decently and he puts together volume. So I, I know Anders just it's, doesn't like that. Yeah, listen, it's certainly that's certainly interesting. I mean, but other than getting submitted literally last fight to Andre Muniz, his only loss in the UFC by finish, his only loss in his career by finish was the Tiago Santos fight where he didn't come out for the fourth round. Yeah. I mean, listen, uh, you know, it, it Hey, anything's possible. For sure. Four ounce yeah, gloves it, and you're an iron turtle. So yeah, <laughs> yeah like you were saying, oh, uh, we got this next one here. <laughs> uh I was doing some tape and it's not Joseph Holmes, guys. This is just Bruce Buffer introduction. It's just ugly man Joe. That's it's it. It's just ugly man Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing else. So uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that, guys. It's Ugly Man Joe versus Alan Amadovsky. Uh, Ugly Man out of glory MMA. I mean, he says on Twitter, is you know, this is the most prepared he's ever been. He feels great. He's like, I know all fighters say this, whatever. But So maybe we take a little grain of salt. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, 26, he's got a huge size advantage. This is another one of those notable ones. Six inches of height, six inches of reach. Uh, Holmes, I mean, he's got five submission wins in his career. So that's definitely a way that he might be able to get after here. I don't know if Amadovsky is going to be able to uh, get, get finished here uh from submission it's never happened in his career but I, I wouldn't rule it out in general because i just don't trust who he's been facing in that regard joseph holmes um you know not not a great look in the in the jamie pickett fight but maybe he gets some of those jitters behind him uses a size advantage amadovsky coming off what was it a real long layoff here and just doesn't really look great on tape I, I, but joseph holmes minus 190 is that something we're we're running to to really be touching over there I, I don't know if it's like running to be touching, but I feel like I I mean it makes sense. I just feel like Alan Amandowski's a complete enigma. I have no idea what I'm getting with him at all. He gets he, he needs in crucifix and getting absolutely obliterated by Christoph Jotko. And like Herb Dean's like, you know what? I could stop it, but there's like 12 seconds left and you're not, you know, you're not necessarily getting finished. This isn't cool, but, you know, you can just keep getting smashed if you want. And then he, the one thing you can't do with John Phillips, the only thing you can't do with John Phillips, who's not very good at all, is let him hit you with his overhand power. And that is exactly what Alan Amadovsky did. And he went to sleep hard. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen him since. They book him against Bevion Lewis, which is insanely weird. And then a year and a half later, they try to book him against Yao Zhang Hu. And then they try to do that twice. And he pulls out on fight day, I'm pretty sure, for one of those. Um, yeah, we did see him way in. You're right. Right. Yeah, we definitely did. He didn't look necessarily fantastic. <laughs> Would love to go see that again. But then he pulls out on way in day. Doesn't make that fight. Yao Zhang Hu, I don't even think is the UFC anymore. I think they cut him, in, signed him and cut him in the time <laughs> that it's taken Alan, Alan Amadowski to come back. And now he's facing a guy that's way bigger than him. And, uh, you know, can crack has some good power. Um, the problem with um, Joseph Holmes is, you know, he, he struggled with the clinch, of course, against Jamie Pickett in his last fight um, and being pressured. Uh, his fight in Fury FC was like, uh, super like weak right he just he kind of like just hits the guy and he goes oh oh no it was that yeah he just he hits the guy and he just goes over like he hits him in the liver it was terrible and um and then the dana white contender series fight was um yeah i i don't know he he struggles to maintain his range well that even though he's got all this length and uh that can be a problem against somebody super aggressive like Amadovsky. And then you kind of keep your hands low and uh, anything can happen with these four ounce gloves. So yeah, I don't know. I lean Holmes. Maybe somebody like prodigy could talk me into it or out of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I watched that Amadovsky tape. And I didn't even know what to, what to say after that. I needed a drink. Uh, <laughs> That Jocko fight, yeah, it clearly should have been stopped by Herb Dean. Mm -hmm. and then the, the guy's tough. He comes out and does it for another round. Um, just a, a brawler with horrible takedown defense. Absolute fish off his back. But he's got power in both of his hands. And if he hits you with one, you, you might go down. Joseph Holmes, not very good. I, I mean, he looked solid against jamie pickett in that first round before he slowed down i mean it was on two and a half weeks notice he should have better cardio this time he's much longer uh he's got a sub game if he can get this down to the mat i think he he, he could sub amadovsky but th there's just not much i'm looking to play on this fight uh it might be a shit show but it might be enjoyable uh have a beer and just watch this one. All <laughs> fights are enjoyable from that standpoint, but I guess if you look at Amadovsky at KO plus 300 or Holmes by submission at plus 215, either of those tickle your fancy? No. Fair, <laughs> Fair enough. 
Not enough. I need a Not little enough. bit more. Caesars was had that uh, Holmes inside the distance line at two fifty. They flipped. Oh, they wow. flipped Amadowski's and Holmes by accident. So I oh, touched wow. a little of that, but oh, okay, sneaky, sneaky. I'm not, I'm not tracking <laughs> that. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I get that. That's just a little nibble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about talk about a little nibble. We got our uh, big piece of sexy out here, Parker. Oh Porter, my goodness! Welcoming uh, Jelton Almeida to the heavyweight division. Uh, is this a permanent move for Jelton? What is happening? I don't. I think he just wanted another fight. This is one of the quickest ones he could get. Doesn't it's have not going to be permanent off of a loss. Uh oh. Uh oh. I, so, I mean, you see how made here. He's seven years younger. He's three inches taller, four inches more of reach. Um, yeah, but he's not the natural heavyweight. Very curious to see what kind of size he comes in at. I, I was impressed with his overall, you know, grappling experience. It looked like the type of stuff he does when he goes for the takedowns and he gets them wrapping up the legs. Um, the body like he's extremely strong. Um, yeah, I was, I was impressed overall. I just feel like I would be much more willing to take Parker Porter if I thought that. So I, I know he's got like a very good pace on the feet. It's just I don't think he has anything that's going to specifically be hurting Almeida early. So if he can survive the early onslaught, you should be live betting the shit out of this spot. I just think that Almeida is going to have his way early. And it's just like how long will it take for him to wear down trying to move around the massive like 265 pound frame of Parker Porter. And yeah, I mean, I think if you see Almeida kind of like, Oh, the bright lights or whatever, like I just don't think it's going to be one of those like Parker Porter submits some rear naked choke round one, you know, like against Jay Sherman type of ideas. Like I see this more as like Almeida's fight to lose, but as a minus 575 favorite and Parker Porter plus 410, you really don't have to talk yourself into much to be touching the underdog here, especially in the heavyweight division with a guy in the natural weight class. But for me, um, if I'm looking for a juicy line, Almeida, he's got a lot of knockouts, a lot of submissions on his record, six knockouts, nine submissions. But they have the knockout, even though his UFC debut was also a knockout. Uh, they have it at a plus 225, and he gets it from the ground and pound positions and Porter being a brown belt. I think he's going to be able to stuff the initial submission attempts. So I think if the athleticism is a bit too much to deal with, that plus 225 for a knockout, uh, same type of idea that you saw with like Marquez. But, boys, you seeing something a little different here? I honestly don't. I have no interest in betting this fight unless it's on the dog. This is ridiculous. I don't understand why he's at heavyweight. And... um you look at what he's doing. He's done. He does so many grappling matches. You know, I don't know how invested he is necessarily in MMA. And he beat Danilo Marquez, and that guy sucks. Um, and who he gets to beat? Who he gets to? Who he beats to get to the UFC on Dana White Contender Series wasn't very good either. Even though the dude was nine and zero, just was a very padded nine and zero. Uh, and Parker Porter has, while it's been the bottom of the barrel in terms of the head, the very bottom of the barrel in terms of the heavyweights <laughs> and Alan Badeau, Chase Sherman, and Josh Parisian, like that's still a heavyweight and not a light heavyweight. So unless you're taking Jalton by finish in round one specifically, you can't bet Jalton at all. And it's all Parker all day because it's just insane. And that's it. What do you got, Prodigy? So you, you spoke about dark horses earlier with Andre Muniz. This Hit is me. the dark horse of the heavyweight <laughs> division. Let's go. Parker Porter, what, three in a row? Three more. We might be looking at a title shot maybe. Um, <laughs> plus 470 right now on FanDuel. I mean, I think Porter's got more than a 17% chance to win this fight. I, I think this line is a little crazy a guy that's been weighing in at 203 coming up to heavyweight to fight a guy who possibly cuts down to heavyweight. I mean, I'm looking at the overs over one and a half. I'm seeing uh, a lot of plus money. You just need this big guy to last a little bit if he's getting his ass kicked. 
And then Porter, I got to take a slice of that. I'm not going to do much, but got to <laughs> take plenty a there to get a slice of, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, he should be stronger than this dude. I mean, you can last a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Just a sloppy fight. I'm looking for that over one and a half. Give me seven and a half minutes. That's all I ask for. Okay. I can, I can totally see that as well. Um, I'm pulling for you, man. I like I one of our favorite narratives on this show to say, or one of our favorite sayings. I just said it. One of our well, face, favorite sayings on this show to say is fade the narrative. And you're all over that in this fight. Fade that fucking narrative. Overs and dogs. Like, let's go. Always, always try to get some plus money going. So my question, because you do say like, oh, you know, I don't think it happens at 17% of the time. I just asked from like a, uh, I guess, uh, like a principal standpoint for you to take a shot on an underdog. Like what type of margin of edge like would you want to have on your implied probability? Like you looking for like, oh, well, I think he's got like a 25% chance. So if it's at 17%, like that's good enough for me or like for you to take a play like uh, a recommended shot on something are are you more like well i think this is 50 50 so you're giving me a 17 percent. like how wacky does it have to be for you to want to make a play on that oh it's not too bad okay. <laughs> i just put it in my spreadsheet if it works it works okay yeah, I'm not gonna go little... too too far into it. Oh no, yeah, no, no, no. I got right. you. little. You got the yeah. little secret sauce working. Okay. All right, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I, I don't need much value. That's why I usually got a uh, high volume plays. If I see value, uh, I'll usually attack it. Okay, well that way also from like once again we we say from like a principal standpoint, it's like you're not leaving anything on the table. You don't leave, you know, finish the event like oh I didn't get to play on this. I didn't play that. Like you had all your bases covered, all your thoughts and everything are out on the table. So at least, you know, with that wide range, throwing down a little bit here, there on all the fights, like, you know, all those points that you were finding. I, I like that approach. That's a cool thing. Uh, definitely something Absolutely. that we maybe, maybe should look at a little bit more in terms of like finding the, the dog money. I think a lot of times we, we uh, make sense of the line and, and pick slight favorites. And that those are like the most dangerous ones to pick. Yeah, for sure. I yeah, think, uh, uh, yeah. Slight dogs are the only, uh, I think UFC lines that are profitable over the last 10 years. Yeah. I'm just like a blind basis. Just throw your money on those slight dogs and you're, you're cashing at the end of the day. And if you could cherry pick which ones it actually is going to be, Oh man, you're really kicking for sure. Uh, so hey, here we are, another fight with another short dog. Here we got <laughs> Omar Morales, uh, minus 140, and Urosh Medic at plus 120. This one, I mean, uh, Morales here, you know, his move down to the uh, the featherweight division hasn't been so kind, so it looks like in this fight, he's actually going to be making the move back up back here, up. yeah. Uh, so is that helping the cardio with his aggression, with his output? Because uh, yeah, I mean, he just is not really bring the pace so much, and uh, he really hasn't done so much impressive at, at the UFC level. A, a few unanimous decisions where you know he just kind of wins based on pace, but um, you know, it's not like his striking accuracy is anything to write home about, it's just that his defense is pretty decent, able to keep the fight at distance for the most part, and able to avoid being controlled at a high rate by his opponents, but um, that doesn't really spell out so well when you're facing a more explosive striker in Euros Medic. Uh, someone that, yeah, he'll give you the takedown like all day long if you're going to shoot on him, but I can't trust Omar Morales to, to consistently shoot on takedowns here. Uh, Why would you? 0.66%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it just doesn't happen on a regular basis. So do I trust Medic once this fight gets out of the first round? No, definitely not. Medich is one of those guys I definitely like fading on, on the regular. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Medich at like a plus two, 250 for a knockout. It's interesting. Um, I mean, he could potentially even win the first two rounds and then kind of like really struggle down the stretch, get that decision to plus 500 if you're really trying to like fade the narrative here. I just don't like backing a guy like Morales as a favorite here, moving back up weight, giving up size. It, that that's not the spot that I like. Um, guru, guru, what do you think? 
why do I want to take like a the greasiest stab ever on Medich by sub at plus a thousand? Like I don't I if he uses any grappling uh, at all. <laughs> like I, I get what you're saying. Like I just feel like because he feel just, like he literally just got submissions... by JSP. I mean JSP's a much better grappler, obviously, at least in terms of the wrestling. Well, I mean, you said it to me yourself is that JSP's a chain wrestler where right, he's like he's not gonna change. Euros well, Medic is like, I'm gonna hurt you on the feet and then feet. scoop your neck or hop on your back. Sure. But like Morales has that striking defense, like we talked about. I mean, Giga couldn't hurt him, so um, that's that's interesting um yeah not not much i like on this fight i, I do kind of lean towards towards the dog omar morales has given me nothing to feel great about so um <laughs> yeah i mean you'd like but like uh, uros hasn't really shown much in terms of his entire career he's barely really fought uh fighting the 35-year-old Mikey Gonzalez in his Dana White Contender Series was like the most ridiculous fucking fight ever. That dude was not the dude threw uh, the dude threw five spinning hook kicks in two minutes and he took one shot to the liver and was like, oh my God. And then like tried to throw fight through it through one more spinning hook kick and then got kicked in the body one more time and buckled over. Um, so very, very sketchy. In terms of everything for Uros getting to the UFC, Elon Cruz was the worst ever. That was the crazy. He knocks him out so fast. The dude didn't, didn't even throw a strike. Um, and then he, then they're like, okay, good start, good start. Let's give you a fucking savage top 20 Jalen Turner. <laughs> and Jalen Turner, you know, slices through him like hot butter. Um, butter. Like a hot knife through butter that doesn't. Like, <laughs> like hot butter. <laughs> makes sense. Um, yeah. What do you think, Prodigy? Yeah, I I voted that Jalen Turner uh, plus one ten. I think that was the best spot of the year in twenty twenty one. Yeah. Um, I'm just I put four units on this under two and a half. Nice. Uh, at one seventy. I'm going to keep taking Medich unders until he proves me wrong here. Uh, guy's never been past the seventh minute in any fight in his career. Morales doesn't exactly finish fights uh, at a huge rate, but he's going against a car crash in Medich. So I'm willing to see if he can force it. Um, I don't really love a side here. I would go towards the Morales side. <coughs> Apologize, I'm coming over a little sickness here. Oh, good, dude. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why Morales made the move to featherweight. I think he was 10 and 0 went at 55, he's getting his career going, uh, and then just decides to drop down. I think he took on Giga, and it was all from there. But yeah, I think he he should pretty cleanly win this fight. Wow. If it goes past four minutes, you think so? You really think he gets back I, on track here? Yeah, if, if he was, if this was a pick em, even money, or uh, he was a dog, yeah, I, I would like Morales here, but I think right. it's priced pretty good. I'm yeah, just, I'm all on the under. Uh, give me I a really, minute, under. I saw that play on the under. I really, really, really like that. Interestingly like, enough, could, could I, uh, can I sell you plus 100 for the fight not to – oh, wait. it's No, I'm sorry. Fight not to start round three is minus 135. So, yeah, good line, yeah. too. I, I would I would uh, that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I saw that plus 100. I know Guru loves the plus money. I do so. love my plus <laughs> one. And I realized I was wrong, so now I got I to gotta zip it. You were wrong. <laughs> Terrible. Well, hey, guys, I mean, you're already in here. You might as well give us a little like, right? Subscribe to the channel. Hope you're enjoying the content. The boy prodigy bringing all the the big picks out here, and the um, sick takes. Yeah, man. Hope you guys are enjoying because this has been a great time breaking down these fights. Um, I love the stat sheets here. Thank you, thank you. Uh, a lot of entry, a lot of my, my brother really helped a lot with uh, putting in like all the formulas and like the uh, yeah, like the um, algorithms. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's hopefully the next step. So we'll see. Oh, Jay's. See how oh, we go. You got to get him in there. Hell yeah. So uh hey, we'll get on to this next fight. We just got a few more to break down for you guys today. 
Uh, we got Jonathan Martinez versus uh, Vince Morales. Is this a uh, revenge on Factory X Muay Thai for Vince Morales? Uh, last time we saw him face someone from Factory X, it was Chris Gutierrez absolutely chopping his leg off. So, uh, yeah, mm. I'm sure uh, maybe he's got a little PTSD hopping in there. And when I say hopping in there, I mean sometimes when he's kind of like on the front foot following people around, it's like hopping around. You know, he's like that, that like box. He's like riding his horse, getting a little excited. And everything, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but like Vince Morales, yeah, it gets me a little nervous when you're trying to close the distance on a guy like Martinez that likes moving on the back foot, countering, countering. body kicks, boxing ain't that bad. He throws the leg kicks too. It's just like you would hope – you would hope, Vince Morales, are you going to be prepared for leg kicks this time? Please. Please. Like something. He, he throws a little caution bit. to the wind too much. He really, really does. It's a problem. He gets hit a lot. I mean, you look at his stats there. I mean, his landed to absorb and his landed to absorb at distance. Like, they're basically the exact same. And, uh, you know, when you're fighting somebody like Jonathan Martinez who – I mean, is going to be a, the, you know, they both like to counter. So that's kind of interesting. And in who's going to be first and uh, Vince, who likes to, like you said, jump in and out, in and out. He may throw himself out of position and Martinez may just be able to pick him apart. Yeah, I think one way or another, he should just, he should be able to, to win it either down the stretch or anything like that. I feel like the one thing that sketches me out about like, Morales in particular, stylistically, uh, in it's Martinez's hard. case, is that like he loves throwing those body shots and then working up. So like yeah. Martinez, you saw Davy Grant just spam that same combo over and over. But I just don't think that Morales is Davy Grant in that regard. Uh, it's just something I picked up from like what he likes to do is work the body well. But like that works well against guys like Draco Rodriguez, where it's like a glorified sparring match. The commentators are saying, not necessarily against a guy like Martinez, where. Uh, he's got a little bit more oomph, and uh, he could definitely put a pace on as far as the volume goes. I mean, what I what I really didn't like about Martinez, though, if if we go back and look at his last fight against Alejandro Perez, like he's he's a little bit longer than Perez, so he's just throwing leg kicks basically. He's rare; he's not using his hands too much. And then at the end of that, I think it was the end of the first round. I think it was the end of the first round. He gets dropped bad, and um. I, I mean, maybe he was, maybe he stumbled a little bit, but like, dude got rocked with an overhand and it wasn't, I remember not feeling great about it. And, you know, he has to recover in the corner. And then again, kind of goes to implement the game plan of not throw myself out of position, keep my hands back and just kind of throw leg kicks at Alejandro Perez. And he was significantly younger than Perez. And we kind of all thought a lot, he was a huge favorite and people thought that he'd get the finish over Perez and he didn't. Um, you know, the one thing you could say about Morales is that the dude cracks, right? He he knocked the shit out of Luis Smoker, although I guess everybody kind of knocks the shit out of Luis Smoker. So it's like, mm. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think if this fight looks too pretty, it's a problem for Vince Morales. If Morales can kind of crash and really make it dirty and hurt Martinez and throw him off his game, uh, maybe he can steal something. But uh, maybe like a split decision. Like something wild like that, but I don't know. Maybe I think Martinez should be able to get it done. I have a feeling Prodigy's the other way. Yeah, not much on this fight. Uh, shout out my guy Vince Morales, cash that KO prop last time. A hey. plus 500. Uh, I would honestly, if I was making a play here, it would probably be the same thing plus 550 on, on the KO. Martinez, yeah. he's he got dropped by Perez at the end of that round. He's been hit. Um, I, I, yeah, he he didn't use his hands at all in the first ten minutes of that fight. I, it's very strange, but yeah, obviously his calf kicks could really come into play here against Vince if he hasn't wisened up and done something. But yeah, I, I'd like to see him get some revenge against Factory X here. <laughs> He's got a vendetta against them. So interestingly enough, I look towards this uh, money line finish only. Vince Morales also 
That's funny. <laughs> he has this. He has a vendetta against him. That's his name, Vince Vendetta Morales. Yes. Nice. <laughs> okay. All right. We see what you did over there. Took a minute. At least Google picked it up. I picked it up. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's his nickname, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's well done, Prodigy. The golf so you, you, there. Uh, you like that? Po- I like that plus five fifty on the knockout. And if you want to say, you know, the guy more live to get a finish here, Morales. And Martinez's path to victory is most likely going to be a volume-based decision here. Morales finish only plus one ten, and you know if this fight goes to decision, you don't you don't gotta sweat it anymore. Uh, could be a little interesting too, but uh, it's not overall, bad. Yeah, I like the five fifty though. Yeah, like no, that five fifty is juicy. We like that, man. We like that. All right. Well, oh, here we right, go. So we got, I think we got a little. Is there a little more juice left on the bones in these last two fights? What do we think? Is there? Can we wring the towel anymore? Any, Let's uh, say. Sure. I mean, yeah. For I mean, sure. we got Chase okay. Hooper and Felipe Kolarish. We're seeing Kolarish this should be the main event. <laughs> this, is this is the, <laughs> the, the people's main event for real. This and <laughs> uh, and Pahea. Yeah, man. I mean, well, so Hooper, I mean, this one, I think we're guaranteed one, a lot of toughness and a lot of scrambles here. He hasn't fought either since that um, Adesanya Vittori 2 card. It's been 11 month layoff for Chase Hooper. Um, He had the. Nope. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Look at Chase that. Hooper. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, it has been a while. And so that's one of those things where, like, you, you see. The line, it was another one of those bet on line. You know, you, you catch it, you snap, it's gone. And, you know, Chase Hooper, yeah, he was minus 110 at one point. We're looking at plus 155 and Kolarish at plus, minus 180 now. Hooper, I, I think it's tough to say what strides he's made. I'm interested to see physically on the scale. You know, a guy that's still only 22 years old, I mean, he's still grown into his body here. I think it's going to be important to note what kind of experience he's built muscularly because to see him get controlled in his last time out by Steven Peterson, you can kind of see where the path to victory for Felipe Kolarish might be here. The same token, Felipe Kolarish, really not a good offensive wrestler. Uh, Yeah, he's got 1.8 takedowns, but 22% average. It's not so hot. And uh, Hooper, not so hot either is, uh, you know, uh, it says, I don't know if my stats are even right here. Four of a hundred. Mike wow. and I have to go back and take a look at that. Maybe it's four, uh, it's just be four of ten. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That seems sketchy as hell to me. So we're just going to ignore that because no, uh, he definitely take the take, uh, tried a hundred takedowns, bro. A hundred takedowns in how many uh, UFC fights? Well, he tried at least twenty against Casters. I will say that. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, but so, anyways, uh, so yeah, ultimately, just Chase Super. I think my question is he does have the skills. He's obviously got like juiced up by the UFC. I just think from distance, Kolaris obviously has just an advantage overall based on like the guys he's fought and what he's been able to do. Um, Kolaris and moving the back up in shown, weight, right? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, he is. So giving up a ton of size here, it's just like, is it going to be beanpole Chase Hooper? Or is it going to be someone that can actually put a hurting on Kolaris? Like, I, I'm not really running to, to, Play this one. I think over two and a half minus 160, or if I goes the distance, uh, we got a minus 135. That, that's probably what I say. I think both guys are tough and both are pretty good defensively, uh, jiu jitsu wise. But the one thing that you can really highlight, and it's I can't overstate how cliche it sounds, but both of these guys are so freaking tough. You watch them take crazy beatings, you watch Chase Hooper take a beating versus Caceres and versus Peterson. You watch Felipe Calares take a huge beating against um, not only Chris Gutierrez and still try to come back, but that Montel Jackson fight was fucking wild in the way that he took a beating. Yes. I thought he was, I thought he was literally like, like dead dumb. after that yep. second round, like <laughs> totally well done, cooked, and he came out and like fought his ass off in that third. Still didn't win, obviously, or even win the round, but just the amount of heart and where you pull that second or third tank of cardio out of, I don't really know. Um, you know, the one thing that you would want to see is um, right. Is, is chase Hooper be able to try to hurt him on the feet, but can you even hurt him on the feet? And, and chase is not the better striker. Um, he's not going to wrestle him. And uh, you know, other than I think 
some sort of like wacky knee bar ankle pick sort of crazy submission that chase hooper might get i don't i'm not really sure where chase hooper wins the fight i'm not sure he's gonna outpoint him he's not gonna out control him so prodigy talk some sense into me bud what do you think yeah so uh hooper was 22 at this point um he's really starting to grow into his body he said he's he cuts down from 180 now to, to get to 45. I think when he, he okay. said he was eight, 18, he he was about 152, 153. He would cut down. So he's getting a lot big, a lot bigger. Um, he's been training and striking with Wonder Boy at this point. I think this is his second camp there. Um, yes. I, I like the, the tank out of Hooper. Uh, if you, you put a pace on Claris, he he'll slow down. If you can start taking him down, I know Huber doesn't have the wrestling, but he's getting bigger, stronger. I've got this fight closer to even than, than uh, like than the, the book plus, he's had it originally. Yeah, like the plus one forty they got on Hooper right now. I'm just gonna keep letting that climb. Uh, it, it hasn't shown any sign of stopping at this point. If he can find himself on top of uh, Kalaris, he can really wear on him probably hold him down for a little bit. I mean, Montel Jackson landed, what, 11 takedowns on this dude? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's not – you're not coming into this with a, a huge confident play. Right, that's kind of what I wanted to get because he's like, you know, one takedown per, you know, 15 minutes for Hooper. You, It's super – about everything you say, whenever you say it makes so much sense. I'm like, you're right. It makes – you're right. If you, if you can get on top and control him, it's dangerous. Yeah. If he's growing into his body and becoming a much better striker, you know, when you, we've talked about it before, when you're, when you're in that second and third camp with a new camp, you really start to pick up more 11 months off at 22 years old, the amount of improvements he could be making. Well, he said that's, he likes to take time between the camps, get, you know, fill more into his body. He said he's working with the PI now. They're, you know, helping his weight cut. He used to just do it by himself. He said he would just stop eating, and that's probably not the best way to do a cut. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't think there's bad value on the dog here in Hooper. I know a lot of people just like to fade him because they don't like him. I mean, some people – I have been called the Hooper Whisperer. I do have a 4-0 <laughs> record betting uh, on or against Hooper, and uh, okay. I will – put it to the test on this one i'll have some Ooh. action on the dog but just waiting for that line to settle if it's going to keep skyrocketing well, i'll follow the dog whisperer let's go and i love yeah, who I, it I is so. oh, rogue strummer. Strummer. let's go baby let's go and i'm rogue <laughs> go good warriors, man fellas. let's go hell yeah awesome man uh, another new staple of the show gotta love rogue stopping by uh appreciate you man and hey guys, we did it now. We we made it on to our uh, to the fight you've all been waiting for. <laughs> uh, we got know, Elise Reed versus uh, Sam Page, Sam Hughes. Um, this one should be uh, a barn should, burner. Yeah, I think ultimately it comes down to does Elise Reed get to play her game from distance? Uh, Sam Hughes isn't necessarily like technically sound, but she could put on a little bit of pressure. She puts on a pretty decent pace. But, uh, you know, I think that's something that Elise Reed can stand up to on the feet. It just comes down to is Sam Hughes going to be the one to go and uh, go and wrestle her? And I just can't envision Sam Hughes really landing as many takedowns as she needs to or holding her there if she's able to get her there. I think the fight against Loma Lugbunmi is kind of like the one that tips me off to where I don't think Sam Hughes wrestling is that good. I think just like Estela Nunez is just like her cardio is just that bad. And um, yeah, I mean, good for Sam Hughes. Gets herself a new little re-up on the deal and everything like that. But Elise Reed, I think, is probably coming back to spoil the party. And um yeah, I, I'm not like super confident either way here, but I, I do think at minus 150, at least Reed probably is the one. And yeah, over two and a half at minus 370, fight goes a distance. Yeah, find something to parlay that too. Have a great time. You know, I mean, uh, that's where I end up on this one. 
I agree completely. I think uh, Reed is should be good enough, athletic enough, strong enough to get it done. Um, she does have the questionable takedown defense, but then again, so does Sam Hughes, and you wonder how well she can actually control her. Um, you look at the levels of competition, um, and it's not even really close in terms of, uh, you know, records in terms of any of that, right? She beat Corey McKenna, uh, you know, loses to Soraya Eubanks, who was like down a weight class, but up a weight class. And she's up a weight class to kind of get her foot in the door in the UFC. So that was just an absolute smashing. So there's, you know, whatever. You can't really knock her too much for that. She beats Hilaria Rose. She beats Jillian DeCourcy. She beats Jasmine Jazz Divisius, who we should all know, right? You know, was 4 0 at the time in CFFC, which is a, a premier promotion. Um, gets her first win in Bellator, right? Um, you look at the other side of that coin. Sam Hughes gets the majority decision win over Estella Nunez. Nunez, who we had picked very silly. Um, you know, really has, as we thought would be much better in terms of the striking, really wasn't. Her cardio was not there at all. Sam was just able to eat shots the Homer Simpson style and then put her down as she got gassed and has absolutely no takedown defense at all. We also expected Estella Nunes' takedown defense to be better since she had fought Carnelosi. And it just again, none of it, none of it really panned out. So I don't really see that win as too impressive. And not for nothing, it was her back against the wall fight that, like you said, she got herself another contract. And what did she do with this brand new contract? It was like the money, money in the bank WWE. <laughs> like, let me cash this shit in right away. And she's back in a month later. So that's kind of sketchy. Would have liked her to take some time off and. I can't. I don't know. She's 29. She probably just wants to get back in it. I get it. Um, <laughs> I still lean Reed. What do you got for me, Prodigy? Us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my number one rule: you you got to bet on Jersey. Uh, Lise Reed, the the Princeton girl here. That's good. Uh, love her. Uh, the right hand. She she puts that out like a piston yes. sometimes. That thing is crisp, but. She she's got to keep this fight on, on the feet. Obviously, she can't let herself get backed up against the fence. She's got good lateral movement. I like her footwork. Uh, she did well against McKenna. I know for some reason Corey went into there and she did not want to wrestle until ten seconds left. But any I'll take drowned. that. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that decision win any day of the week. Uh, Sam Hughes, I, I'm not high on her at all great cardio and then that's really where it falls off from there uh she's got a decent one too but she can be badly out volumed um Elise reed can really touch her up with that right hand she's just gotta really just keep her at distance and, and just keep pumping that right hand and uh this should be a, a clean decision victory uh, i took two units at, at uh 165 nice and uh, i'm looking at a decision prop as well okay yeah you can't you really can't hate that at all decision for release read right now is sitting at minus 110 on DraftKings. fanduel hasn't posted it yet because they suck <laughs> they used <laughs> to be faster and now they're slower i don't know what's going on with them they go in waves they do yeah I, um, I had nunez in that uh in that hughes fight as well uh disappointing yeah. Yeah, but I, I did have better. Elise Reed against McKenna, so that, that made I didn't up have for that me. one. <laughs> didn't have that one. I felt I felt so good when you um said use. I'm like, oh, you said use lateral movement. That's what I have in my notes, and uh, you know, <laughs> a, couple, a couple other things that you said. I'm like, yeah, I wrote that too. So there yeah, we go. I, I like that. <laughs> so yeah, I think she can get it done. I think so too. I, I like I like her chances, and I one of those fights I definitely want to see. Um, see some face-offs right um she should yes. be like the more should be like the more muscular girl sam Hughes is not very physically imposing i guess neither of them are at 115 pounds but i do think he uh, has a has a couple inches in height though if yes i'm correct yes uh, uh size. two inches two in inches height. of height one inch reach. very interesting yeah. She, i just yeah very very interesting but overall, it's, it's, no, 
large size mismatch. It's a, a little less than that one. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely less than that for sure. That's so funny. Wow. What a what a freaking card. And um what a whole what a whole little streak here. It was like eight another eight week stretch, I believe, of like back to back to back fights. Um, off next week for Memorial Day weekend. So I hope everybody stays safe um, and enjoys their family and you know loved ones and, and everything like that. And catches some tans and, of course, pays respect to all those uh, who've uh, served for us. So thank you for your service. And uh, we'll never forget you for that. Now, for that after that moment of silence, thank you so much, Prodigy MMA, for coming on. Man, that was freaking awesome, dude. You're... Um, I really, you're the way that you handicap fights and the way that you look at shit is so freaking unique, man. And, um, you, there's no, there is n absolutely no filler to your breakdowns. It's all meat. And, uh, there's no, there's no bun, bro. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, that was one of the more impressive things that I've, uh, that, you know, somebody's come on and done. So I, I really appreciated that. Well, thank you. I'm not as eloquent as some others, as you guys. So I, I got to keep nah. it uh, short and sweet. Wow, oh, man. No, seriously, we we appreciate that, man. On hour 30. So we, we kind of killed it. Like I said, off next week, we're back for the June 4th card. So that will be us on June 1st, I think, for Volkov uh, Rosenstruck, which is super interesting. And then the. Uh, and then the the uh, the Singapore card, which is going to be freaking nuts. UFC 275. Mm. Um, yeah, going to be nuts. So let's get that rundown. You can follow me at Guru Scouting MMA. Um, verdict Instagram, Twitter, Tapology. Go check it out. My awesome co-host, TB Scouting MMA. Same spot. Um, Twitter, Verdict, Instagram, Tapology. And, of course, I don't know how you wouldn't be following Prodigy MMA on uh twitter or his bet mma page which is super important guys fucking killing it and i really have a feeling even though he's only up like only up like 50 60 units this year so far i have a feeling he's going to be up a lot more after this weekend hell yeah let's fucking go thanks man. for having me guys uh it was, it was good to shoot the shit with you uh you guys gave a lot of points that i wasn't looking at uh from the other side so I, i'm gonna have to go back in and, and take a deeper dive appreciate it uh, i'm glad to be on the show this is the first time I, I hope you'll uh, have me back at some point absolutely and, uh, look yeah, forward it, to it 100 percent. well hey guys yeah. thanks so much for joining we'll catch you next week take care guys everybody be good